Hi, future GISPs. I'm going to teach you everything that I learned to easily pass the GISP exam so that you don't have to spend years reading textbooks, getting degrees, paying for prep courses, and searching the internet for information like I did. In this video, I'm going to explain how I studied for surface interpretation and representation. Surface interpretation and representation is the third section under the cartography and visualization category of the GISCI Geospatial Core Technical Exam list of knowledge categories. Let's get started with section 303. Surface Interpretation and Representation. This section title is vague, and it overlaps many other sections. Any content that can fall under this category can fall under other categories. Therefore, the content has been placed in the other categories. Refer to material on the following categories for information related to this topic. See sections 102, Representation of Discrete Features and Continuous Phenomena in GIS, Section 201, Spatial Data Models and Their Associated Planar Geometries. Section 304, Understanding of 2D and 3D Visualization. Section 404, Knowledge of Remotely Sensed Data Sources and Collection Methods. And Section 303, Understanding of Analytical Operations and Methods. Since I'm not covering any study material in this section, I'll take this opportunity to discuss the most challenging issues I faced in dealing with the GISCI, Geospatial Core Technical Exam, List of Knowledge Categories, and the GISCI Recommended Study Material. These are the challenges that my study guide remedies for future GISP exam takers. Challenges in Studying for the Exam The primary challenge I had to overcome in dealing with the study material is overlap. The different study material that the GISCI recommends covers the same topics and is repetitive. For instance, most of the Quizlet flashcards are information from the unofficial study guide. Much of the information in the new approved study guide is copied from the unofficial study guide. So I found the same information three times literally copied between those three sources. There are some topics, such as coordinate systems, that are covered over and over again, and other topics such as application security that aren't covered hardly at all. That's why I wrote my study guide. I was tired of encountering the same topics over and over again in the GICI study material, while the study material was void of information for other topics. It's a good thing that I wrote my study guide and found information from outside the realm of the recommended study material because questions about application security were on the test, and I only knew the answers because I included information from sources outside of the GISCI recommended study material. The next challenge I had to overcome was contradiction. There were some topics that were defined differently in different study material sources. Learning about transformations from the study material was a nightmare. It was like everyone who wrote about transformations for the study material had a different opinion about what the purpose of different transformations was. I compared the information about transformations in the recommended study material to other sources to determine which information was most accurate. In the end, I found the most accurate information about transformations on Esri's website. Now I'll go over the most important challenges I had in writing my study guide and in making these videos. The most challenging issue to overcome in writing my study guide and making these videos was overlap between the knowledge categories. For instance, the categories knowledge of data security and knowledge of systems and application security overlap. It's difficult to decide which category to place information about security in. In my opinion, there should just be one category titled digital security. The next issue I had to overcome was a scarcity of information. At first glance, it seems like there is a mountain of information in the recommended study material. This is an illusion. There's not actually that much factual information in the recommended resources. Several of the sources are material copied from other sources. The unofficial study guide, Quizlet resources, and official study guide contain the same information. 
Sometimes the authors of these three sources reworded the information, and sometimes they just copied it. Authors just keep copying the information about the contributions of the three authors, Holstead, Goodchild, and Demers to the profession. They just copied the excerpt that originated in the unofficial study guide, even though it doesn't make any sense. For some topics, such as data security and application security, I took paid courses from digital security industry-leading organizations to find good content about digital security to include in my study guide. It's a good thing I did because there were questions on the exam that I only knew the answers to because I had taken those courses and recorded the core material in my study guide. That's the end of my rant about the challenges I faced in studying for the GISP exam that you won't have to deal with. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can keep helping people pass the GISP exam and achieve the rewarding careers in GIS that they deserve. You can also find everything I learned to pass the GISP exam in my book, The Ultimate GISP Exam Study Guide, available on Amazon. My study guide is an easily understandable, comprehensive, graphical, all-in-one resource for passing the exam. You can find the link to my study guide in the description below. Thanks for joining me and congratulations in advance on passing the GISP exam.